Hi everybody, I'm Sabine Lenz, the founder of Papers Breaks, and I know a lot of you have been waiting in the waiting room. Hello. You feel free to say hello um, in the chat area. I would love to see who's there, where you're from, what you're doing, why you're joining today. Um, this is a lively conversation, as you will find out when you meet our guest speaker. Um, there's going to be laughs, there's going to be dancing at Conga Line, you get the drift. Um, but I really wanted to welcome you to our Sleeking the Best Kept Foiling Secret in Design webinar. Um, as you know, I'm Sabine Lenz, the founder of Paper Specs, and I'm really, really excited um, to see how we can all produce truly eye-catching creations through a smart combination of digital printing and digital printing, digital color foil. Um, before we get started, just some quick housekeeping. I'm sorry, I need to move my slides. There we go. Um, at this stage, all attendees, <coughs> excuse me, which is you guys on listening only mode. Hello. Hello, Sue. Good to see you. Oh, Jeff is here. Hi, Jeff. Several Jeffs, actually. Oh, Anna Lena from Germany. We can, we can das alles in Deutsch machen, wenn du möchtest, aber dann verstehen die Anna kein Wort. Um, <laughs> hi, Joe. Good to see you guys. Hi, Barbara. All right, you're coming fast and furious. I love it. I love to see where you guys are off from. And it's it's great. Santa Clara, just down the road, Joseph. You can just come up here and we can do this from, from here in person. All right. Um, as I mentioned, just some housekeeping. Um, at this stage, all attendees, because you guys are in listen-only mode, but you already discovered the chat box. And so as we go, please um, put in your questions. We have two amazing experts here to help us answer them all. Um, and we have decided um, 15, around 15, 20 minutes at the end of the webinar to answer all your questions because this is for you guys, because we already know what we're talking about. Well, some of us. Um, and as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be made available to you after the event. Now, I quickly like to thank um, Novelos for making this webinar possible. Um, serving thousands of clients in print, publishing, and general packaging industry, Novelos originally began enhancing print as a trade finisher in 1989. But from the humble roots, the company evolved into really a truly uh, an innovator for printing, print finishing technologies, including innovations such as digital variable data foiling or sleeking, which we'll be talking about today, um, as well as thermal laminate technology uh, which also proves that laminate can be so much more than just protecting your packaging. Um, you can, from, from scuffing, you can add elimination options. This is holographic, metalized foil, and uh, or laminates, tactile textures, and even printable films. Now, I have two very good friends of mine here today. I love it when I can invite friends. It's so much more fun. Um, Erica is Erica Bartos is the founder and partner of Huawei Design, based in Ontario, Canada. With 20 years of experience in design and print, she brings a realistic knowledge of how design translates to a final printed piece. In her perspective remains designing is a privilege and the details matter, start to finish. I'm totally on board with that one. Details really, really matter. And then um, we have Mark Sopra here. Mark is the founder and owner of Progressive Solutions in San Jose, which was acquired by a long-term customer, Lovebook Online, um, just a few months ago. And his new title is General Manager of Neuron Publishing and Director of Global Fulfillment for Lavka. Uh, Mark has 33, year, 33 years of printing experience, including 16 years in on-demand automated pub printing and manufacturing. And that's why he's here, because we're talking about some pieces that um, we work together on with Mark. But uh, when we first started talking about this webinar, I shared um, a a story with Erica and she was like, oh, oh my God, you got to share this um, when we start. So as a lot of you know, I'm invited to speak at conferences at design conferences frequently and I talk about trends and what's going on, especially foiling is such an amazing topic. And um, one of these events, um, it's 1030 at night, I'm in the elevator heading back up to my room and the woman enters the elevator and it's always awkward, two people in the elevator and the kitty corner thing. And she keeps looking at me and I'm thinking, wait, do I know her? Should I know her? Do I know the name badge? You know, awkward situation there. And then she looks at me and she gives me the look and she points her finger and says, you, you, you are the one who told me about digital foiling. I never thought I heard the word digital and foiling in the same sentence. 
So here we are. You will hear a lot about digital and falling in the same sentence today. Um, Erica, lead us off. Um, digital foiling, really? Thanks, um, Sabine. Um, yeah, so I am going to speak into um, this process today, and um, it's an honor to be a part of this webinar. So thank you, Sabine and Paper Specs, for giving a voice to um, print and, and design in that way. And thank you to Nobelis as well for asking me to be a part of this um, webinar. I've uh, worked in a relationship with them for many years. Um, and uh, just a real honor in that. So uh, being in the design industry um, for over 20 years, I did start actually um, with experience in some of the print industry. And so it has always given me a deep appreciation for printing techniques and well executed designs. So I've had the privilege of learning here with this sleeking technology now for over seven years since it really started to come out. And yes, it has been available. Um, and we're wanting to make it more and more known to us as designers, um, this, this great secret here, which we don't want it to be a secret, um, being able to put foil on your digital prints. So, um, and it continues to inspire me as a designer, um, what's available with this technology. So I recall the first time I was asked, um, to create a sample piece to showcase this uh, digital foil sleeking technology. And I was supposed to create the sample to show what was possible with it. Well, the initial hurdle, hurdle for me really was understanding what, what's happening here. What, what, is, um, what do I need to understand from the print end and, and um, what's possible here with foil and digital prints. So, um, once I did grasp that process, um, it really became apparent then what was available from a design perspective. So with all of that said, we want to know, obviously, um, as you can see in front of you there, what is digital foil sleeking? Um, the sample piece you're seeing um, there um, obviously is, is a, an example. And so at the very uh, ground roots of what this technology is, digital foil sleeking technology involves a special foil transfer that bonds to digital print. So unlike a traditional hot foil stamp, no dyes are required in this process to achieve the foil finish. And that's um, really something we need to grasp in knowing what this is. So the foil bonds directly to the printed digital piece. So you run a digital print and then you apply the foil and it will adhere anywhere in which digital print exists. So we are designers and visual people, so we are going to show you this. <laughs> the next couple of slides will give you a little bit of understanding. So if you were to run your design um, as through a digital print, so a toner or ink based, um, and then you your printer would apply the foil, what you're seeing on the screen here is um, the foil being applied to that digital print. So just to give you an idea too, because we don't always get to be with the printers, this is actually what, um, the sleeking foil looks like that's being applied. And, um, oh, Sabine brought my screen up there a little bit. So it is just um, similar to what you would think of a laminate, but it's a transfer. So um, that's on the massive rolls, what's going into this whole technology. And I'll just get back here. So that's what you're seeing being applied here. Um, further to that, then when it comes out, um, all of the areas in which there's been digital print are now um, adhering to, to your, your artwork. I'm just going to move on here. So further to this, what I do want to do, and I'm just going to start with, this will be a little bit more of the mundane part of it, but I want you to understand how this works because that'll help you understand the samples in a moment. So really quickly, this is a three-step, what we call three-step process um, and how your artwork would look. So step one, as you're seeing there, um, is uh, a rich black or 100% black, depending on the recommendations from your printer, um, of the artwork you're going to um, include foiling on. And um, I have, again, you don't need to do the big screen, Sabine, but that's another sample of what you're seeing directly on screen there. So once you're um, in the printing pr production process, um, the foil is applied then, um, that's the second step. And again, what happens, that transfer adheres only, if I can get the camera right, to the areas where you've, you've um, printed in step one. And step three um, is another option. Now, if you don't want to remain with just only foil and you want some more um, artwork, either over printing the foil or surrounding the foil, you can then go back in and print again on top of this. Um, and that's what you're seeing in step three. So um, put again back through your digital printer, you are achieving this um, really beautiful foil effect. Um, and that is the foundations for understanding how this process works. And again, just a 
a, a shot of um, what that looks like. And Sabine asked to use this sample. She loves the cutlery. <laughs> she, no, it's just, I, I love it because it's so subtle and unexpected. It's not your typical, oh, here's your name in foil. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. So we, we did include it. And it is a great example just to help understand this process um, and what exactly is available with it. Right. So um, understanding this part of it, the opportunity and what it offers, we want to know as designers why we're here. What does this offer me and my design opportunities um, and offering my clients um, and, and different aspects of that? Um, again, the sample you're seeing here is a silver foil overprinted again with CMYK. So you're getting the dimensions of that beautiful uh, watch look um, and more three-dimensional image effects on it, which I will touch on as well. One of the main um, assets to uh, digital foil sleeking is this opportunity to do variable data with foil um, and also short run foil projects. So where previously it might not have been um, available from a budget perspective and many reasons, because we're not working with die costs, we now have this opportunity to use variable data where it wouldn't have been an option before. Um, you can run the digital print that was printed with the, the digital ink or toner, and that determines again where the foil bonds. And so now we have this opportunity on things like personal stationery, personalized marketing material, direct mailings, tickets, certificates, that it's really, um, the options are, are many um, where you can now apply foil um, within budget. So uh, again, the samples that you're clearly seeing on screen, things within the invitation, those are name cards, there's um, personalized notebooks in the middle. And Mark, can you just speak a little bit to the die um, comparison on this one as well? Um, the, the book you're seeing on the right hand side there in the sample, he has that and just the difference of how this is possible with with foil sleeking, um, but it would from an economical perspective and, and because there's less of them run, it really wouldn't wouldn't be um, possible otherwise. Yes, I think I met the people from Novellus I'm guessing it's seven or eight years ago, and they've been a partner ever since. We've been doing sneaking for either six or seven years, and it started along these lines. We uh, have a site called Stationary HQ, which serves the wedding industry. And so we've always done traditional foil stamping, and people wanted variable data foil for place cards that you see on the right. So that's the way we started, because that's a fairly straightforward, easy process. I was really looking to do something unique, and so we launched wedding guest books, and the, the, this is the example that you see there, which you see there's, I don't know if you can see there's foil on the front, there's actually foil on the spine, and there's actually foil on the back with the names of the um, maid of honor and stuff like this. So when you think about this, people are very familiar with foil stamping. To make a die this size, this is a 22, uh, the flat size is about 24 by nine. So to make a die that big would probably be three or $400. When we sell this guest book on a one-off basis for about $30. So that's the whole production. So we were looking to do some unique products because it's not a replacement of traditional foil stamping. It's an enhancement. And there are different times where we still use traditional foil depending on the, depending on the product and the options. Thanks, Mark. So that just um, adds a little bit more to, to understanding where this is really useful from a design perspective. Um, a few more examples just on the variable data. This is um, just so you can see a little bit clearer. These were actually, I believe, Sabine, did you work with Mark's company on these ones? Yeah. Um, these were uh, short run, again, notebooks, and they had the opportunity to uh, put variable data within the names. Uh, on these notebooks. So again, they were very personalized and it was something that was economically feasible again with this process, um, the digital print um, and adding that sleeking foil you on know, top. I, what I also loved, obviously we're designers, we can never make up our minds. So we had two covers and we liked them both. And we're like, well, which one? I was for the umbrella, some on the team were for the, the teacup. Um, and so we're like, hey, it's digital, we can do anything we want. So. Um, Mark was very generous and we ultimately ran with both designs and um, we had the names of our VIP members in, on there. As you can see the one on the uh, right, that's that my, the umbrella one got my name there. So uh, it was a huge hit because it was something that we normally, as, as Mark said, we couldn't have done this with normal foil stamping because it's personalized. Mm -hmm. 
It's another sample to show again um, some tickets. So again, um, the opportunity for this on things like ID passes, tickets, or one-time use print items. Um, again, now just making it um, an, an option for design to use FOIL, the sleeping process in it all, just because um, you're not creating separate dies for all of them. So again, those um, things of variable data and one-time use um, designs as well. Um, it really opens up a lot of opportunity. So, th so this variable data and short run projects is, is a huge asset as a designer, um, having this opportunity now to use some foil um, finishes on, on, our, on our work. And um, wanted to touch base on that first because it clearly is a huge selling factor um, from a design perspective. The next thing I want to address and kind of make known to you is color. So let's talk about metallic colors. Um, again, what you're seeing here, this is done on a basic three-step process. So um, we printed um, the digital, uh, a digital print with the black ink. We applied um, the silver foil. Um, and then this is overprint of CMY color on, um, onto the silver foil. And again, this is given, you can never capture foil quite to the same degree on, a, on an image, but that's what you're seeing. So further to that, this entire swatch sheet here really <laughs> is done um, printing silver foil and overprinting with CMYK. Um, and that is gives us the ability then to not like traditional hot foil sampling, you often have um, a standard set of colors you're working with. Um, now there's this option to take CMYK color mixes and really create a color of your choice um, or one that your design may require if you're trying to adhere to brand standards. Um, or other things of that that nature. So that option is there. Um, as well, they, there are other standard foil colors available in this. And I just wanted to show you this really quickly. So you can get into many things. This is holographic and we'll talk on that a bit more, but there are standard foil colors. Oh, oh, am I bringing that one back up? <laughs> moving the camera, sorry, go ahead. That's okay, it's, it's just foil colors. So we've got some greens, blues, red, those are standard. Um, with with uh, as another opportunity um but the this option of overprinting with cmyk really really opens up um design opportunity overprinting that this is another example and i'll actually get mark to hold this up in a moment so what you're seeing here is just another example of this overprinting um with the color um the expressions of color is actually overprinted with a, a a silver underneath that so that comes shows through um, and then as well some of the circle areas are showing just the true silver foil so this is another example to show you what's possible um i think mark's got the sample of it there do you mind just holding that up this one's much Not better captured <laughs> this one's Let's much better captured with a bit of lighting reflection <laughs> how am i doing on that display Pretty good. Good job, yet, but we're good. We did this postcard traditionally, so you can see with the silver foil. This is with a matte lamb on top of it to give a more subtle, solid look. But then you yeah. see the color on here. Yeah. Great. Again, just another example um, with the color. Um, pardon me for one moment. I'm just going to scroll here. <laughs> So the other option and the other thing, we've, the, the examples I showed you to this point were um, flat CMYK color overprints. This is a, another feature really that I love. It's one of my favorite parts of foil seeking. Um, this ability to, when we overprint that CMYK color, K color to overprint images and create these really beautiful dimensional effects on our images. So that's what you're seeing here. So. Um, for example, in the, the sample on the left, it was a ch um, an antique chair. And by adding that foil underneath and overprinting, you've got this beautiful pop um, of color and the foil reflection under the chair. I'm just creating a real traditional, um, beautiful look to that. Uh, again, the example of the butterfly, and I will show this one as well. Um, so you've got this um, metallic butterfly now, in a sense, and um, surrounded by foil as well. Um, but this just pops out in, in a way that we can get and we've got this um, on short run or options where we can um, create these beautiful metallic images so this is another feature of the color uh, over printing color that i that i've really um, enjoyed designing with over over the years so what else i want to touch on a couple other um, points here 
Another um, feature with this, and, and Mark touched base on it just a moment ago, he mentioned that there was a laminate film included in that. So this is uh, another feature we can work with um, in this design process, and we can contrast the foil, the digital um, sleeking foil with printable laminates. And I'll touch base on a few things to help you understand this a little bit. Um, the sample you see on the left, there's a few printable laminates specifically actually that Nobelis carries that, that work really beautifully with this process. The one on the left, and I'm gonna hold up the real sample because you can see so much better what it's all doing. This is a, a holographic metallic foil. Um, and this is actually a very soft to the touch um, ebony caress laminate. So the stock actually starts with this dark black, this beautiful dark black, and then overprinted with this foil sleeking on top. Um, just as a quick way of sample, again, like many of those, this is a gold version of that, um, another holographic. There, there's many options with that, but it just creates this beautiful contrast um, working with that ebony crest laminate. Um, what you're seeing on the right side actually is a print with a CMYK overprint. So we've got a color now, and then it was laminated with a soft touch caress on top. And what it did actually is it creates an effect where you can get a matte metallic. Um, so that again is another, from a design perspective, beautiful feature to be able to get this matte metallic finish instead of the, the shiny foil all of the time. I do want to expound on this. Just, Sorry, go ahead. This distinction. Um, so the one, the Discover with the holographic foil, guys, because it is printed on a matte laminate. So what it is, it's you know, if you print black, there's still, the ink still has a little bit of a sheen to it. But if you put this laminate on top of it, it is just like super matte. And putting the foil on top just creates this amazing contrast, which makes the foil pop even more. It is, and it's a, it's extremely, it's a caress. It's very soft to the touch as well. So from a tac from a, I wish you could feel this from a tactile perspective. It feels lovely to hold. <laughs> Um, as well, the one with the matte, the, the second um, sample you're seeing there with that matte over, uh, or the caress over laminate there too, that gives it the matte metallic, that is a soft to the touch as well. I just wanna explain this process a little bit more now that I'm talking here from originally with the sleeking foil technology and what I mean by using a laminate. So laminates are full coverage. They cover the whole page. You know them well, probably as designers, they protect your work um, in different ways. So incorporating it into it, I just want you to quickly understand how this works. So in step one, again, where we print any of the artwork um, that we want in the background. And step two, so, so the piece that you're seeing coming into the laminator on this sample is, is the original digital print. So then it's being laminated by, in this case, it was actually a caress laminate, so a soft touch laminate. And that, in a sense, that laminate is sealing all of that digital print underneath the laminate. So now what we actually have is almost um, a, a fresh start as far as um, when we move on to the sleeking process now. In this one, this is the sort of the second step then, now that we have that laminated piece, um, we create whatever artwork we want foil to appear on. And that's what you're seeing in step three there, that little image there. So this is the portions of the artwork we want to have foil applied to. And then once it moves through the sleeking um, machine, the foil is applied now just to that digital print that's sitting up on top of the printable laminate. And so you're getting this contrast now in the background of this beautiful soft touch caress and, and foil on top of it. So that is a little bit of understanding how one way to work with, with the laminates. Another really quickly thing without confusing the whole scenario that I do want to mention this, if in budget or in your project, um, you are able to incorporate a laminate, it is um, a really big asset for details because what you can do is you can avoid having to deal with any trapping or knockout, which we will talk about in a mo moment. We just talk about some of the printing insights onto this. So um, talking with your printer and understanding how to incorporate a laminate if it works within a project is, is a real asset to the designs. So from a design end, again, just touching base, this, this technology really is useful on such a variety of market applications. Um, specifically with the variable data um, and short run, um, but again, uh, opportunity on areas that we would have never necessarily um, previously used 
um, foil on um, so award certificates that might have variable data and names um, and so many other aspects of that. And this Wait, is in here, so I am going to let Sabine jump back in for a moment. So for those of you, I always say, if you're live here, there's always a little something, something that we do for you. So for those of you live on the webinar today, um, each and every one of you will get a sleeking sample book. So I know some of you already asked this in the chat, so hoorah. Um, there you go. Yes, Tracy, you're getting one. Um, so that just, just to get a little feel for it yourself. And um, if you're live here today, we're sending you one. Great. <laughs> That is actually the sample that I held up earlier. So just so you can see in, into the pages of this, it's um, many of the standard foils that are available as well. That's a beautiful, it's a rainbow holographic actually. So there's some samples in there for you to see. One thing I do want, and we know as designers that our relationships with our printers are, are paramount in many ways um, so that we can make sure that what we are getting on our screens can translate into print. So this is huge and this is really big in this process. So if you can have a good relationship and really work with your printer for best results in this, they can um, very um, knowledgeably steer you in ways that this is going to um, work really well when, when you're offering it to your clients and you know what you're gonna get in the finished piece is, is what you're offering up front. So I'm just going to um, hand this for, this is a project um, that Sabine and Mark worked on. So I'll just let them talk briefly about this and sort of the timelines that were involved and, and, and what this was used for. Um, and then we can get on to a little bit more with some of the printer insights. Timeline? What timeline? Um, so this is actually a set of notebooks and I have them right here. So for you guys to see um, that we created for Adobe Max, it must've been two years ago. Um, so in collaboration with the NPTA, the National Paper Trade Association, they had a booth and they're like, what can we do? And I'm like, sleeking, that's the newest thing. We got to do something there. Um, so I railed Mark in, poor Mark, um, because obviously it was all pretty last minute, the usual. Um, but we had this idea, we're going to use the same pattern basically, but we overprint different colors just to show off what can be done. And so the notebooks um, came in set of three. And as you can see on the, the image there, this was the shelf was already half ready, em, halfway empty by, by halfway through the first evening. Um, we had, I think, a thousand books, and we thought that lasts us for three days, a thousand packs um, of these books. So they come in different colors. They were all packed. Uh, you know, there's an orange one, there's a black one, as you can see. Um, and they, they went on hotcakes. It was crazy. And halfway through the first evening, I said, we can't do this. We got to take the take off the belly band. We handed them out individually because they were so popular. Um, what also was great about this, and I encourage you guys when you talk to your clients, is also have two or three samples because um, let me take the belly band off. Now we had a conversation starter. You know, I usually never give people three choices. It's way too complicated. But when I, you know, when I talk to other designers, I said, hey, you know, which one do you like better? Which is your favorite color? And it started a conversation, especially when I said, these are digitally foiled. And then like, wait, 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 wait. Uh, because everybody was assuming this was just done in a regular, um, you know, foiled substrate or uh, some other way. Um, but when I said, no, this is printed digitally, they're like, wait a second. And now we had a great conversation to start with. And um, so I encourage you all to have, um, you know, when you work for clients and they go to trade shows, any kind of other events, make two sets and it's a great conversation starter. Now, Mark will have a different view on this because it was all pretty last minute. <laughs> See Mark <laughs> laughing? It was, you know, we're designers. You know, by the time we make up our mind and all the colors and things. And um, and as you can see, we were pretty new to this. Um, today, I would probably put a lighter touch on it, but you can see how some of the colors are over, oops, other way around. Some of the colors are over printed. So, so it's very pretty. Um, and Mark was a good sport because he's like, sure, last minute, designers, we know you well. I don't know, how many days did we give you, Mark? I, I can't remember the exact days. This was still fairly on in our sleeking history, probably a couple of years in. And even though I've been in print for 33 years, so I'm well versed in trapping and all that kind of stuff, this, this job presented some unique challenges because you had co colors that were lighter or darker than the foil 
And so it really needed traditional trapping. And it was a very, very small piece with very, very tight design. So it was extremely difficult. Uh, but but the end results were beautiful. But if you look real close, the trapping's not perfect on it because of the nature of the process and the multiple runs through the press. And, uh, but it was uh, an interesting project, shall we say. Very nice of you, thank you. Um, but the, the key is the designers loved it. And um, I think in this case, the trapping was not that noticeable because we made it look like it was part of the design, so. Yeah. Designers call it beautiful and printers call it interesting. Right? <laughs> <laughs> all, that, all depends on your point of view. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so, so I just wanted them to connect on that a little bit just as we get into working with your printers here. So the next slide does not have any fancy pictures on it or samples for you, but uh, we do just really want to encourage this working with your printer on this technology. And clearly this webinar is introducing this technology to you. Um, but obviously there is much learning to be done too as you begin to use it. So find a printer that uses it and they can um, really give you an understanding um, of how this works. So Mark, did you want to just talk about a few of the things here? I said, talk with your printer at the beginning, decide things like the project purpose, budget, delivery time expectations, maybe how those work into good fits for, for sleeping foil. Um, and then again, um, understanding best practices, which we're gonna get into in a minute, just from um, an artwork perspective on trapping. But did you wanna just touch on that? With yeah, it, it, the earlier you evolve your printer and the more experience they have with sleeping, they'll have some really good input. Because the frequent question I get is, is it better than traditional foil? And that's a resounding sometimes. Um, for example, a few years ago, we did an, an 11 by 14 poster that was solid gold with knockout type to white down to about 11 point type. And literally it would be impossible with traditional foil because the dye would be ridiculously expensive. You'd get picking, you'd get a lot of problems with it. And it worked the first time. It was beautiful. So there are times when it's better. There are times when it's challenging. And hopefully your printer can talk to you about the particular design and how it's going to work in your in your project to yield the best results. Yeah. So there's a few um, other notes from a design and kind of working and getting your files ready that I did want to connect on. Um, that's really important because again, it's it's kind of like the old when we start as designers, we can make all of these things look beautiful on screen. But once we kind of get in and working with printers and having printed pieces, we understand we start understanding better how to design well for print, um, and that is huge. And that's really big in this process as well. So. What you're seeing here, again, are just some quick samples, which I'm going to expound on a bit. Um, but definitely, um, when the design allows for it, include trapping in the artwork. So I know Sabine mentioned a moment ago that the little booklets, because of the fine details and some of the overprinting, this specific one didn't allow for trapping because you would see that visually a little bit. Um, but whenever it does allow for it, which many of the samples previously did have trapping, for example, the silverware one, um, back at the beginning, the watch one, many of those, the butterfly, those all did have trappings so that we really avoided headache on the print end, um, any light leaks. Um, and obviously we're working with digital print. So it's not like working on a litho press where we have that ability with really tight registration. There are always some limitations. So again, trapping is really useful whenever your design allows for it, um, when images are coming together. Um, and again, when with when your budget or again the design allows for it to incorporate incorporate laminate films, and I'm going to expound on that just a little bit more here, um, so you can see some of the benefit of, of using the the caress laminate film with within this project. So I'm just going to move on, and this is a a really good example here, um, and I'll touch base quickly on it, and then I'll let Mark. This was a project he he did there. Um, within his company, in the first uh, left hand side there, these were considerably big posters, right, Mark? I forget what size you said they were. Again, we were you know, our, our customers are designers and they, they tend to push us. So when we launched the guest books, they also wanted wedding signs with the bride's name and the groom's name and foil. And so we released that. So these are 18 by 24 signs. Now this is one of our wonderful customers, she may be on the call, Sid from Go Go Luna. And she came in and she did art prints, which um, were quite challenging or interesting, I guess I should say, but they're absolutely beautiful. They're amazing. 
and and obviously you're seeing night skies here. The, the one on the left had some issues with the traffic and the way the gold was on the curve. Uh, I prefer the one on the right because it's 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 a starry night and it in person it's even way better than what you're seeing on the screen here. So these are up to 18 by 24 posters in in gold foil. Yeah. And so the, the one on the left was done in three steps. So the foil was done first. It was your, um, your black digital print. Um, the sleeking gold foil was applied. Um, and then there was an overprint of color um, afterwards. And so that's where you're seeing on that one that there is some slight light leaks. But if you were to create a lot of trapping, really for this design, it doesn't allow for it or you would see that. But on a larger scale print, um, it is a very small visual, and in this case, it was acceptable to have that slight registration. It worked into the, the beauty of the print as a whole. That's um, what I'm saying. I'm sorry. I'm taking a, a stand here for Google yeah. Luna um, because I think in that, in that case, it really fits with the design. It does. And it does. And I think that that's the thing that. as designers, um, knowing this technology, we have to be flexible in working with it, too. Um, and even in the case of the notebooks in this one, it actually, no one would ever know otherwise um, it, add, it actually adds to the character of the piece of the design so um, obviously she approved of it in her in her um, her eye and, and seeing that and, and it show, shone well the the poster on uh oh erica can you still hear us she should resolve in a minute it's because she's all the way up in Canada, you think? <laughs> a little colder. Right right. Can you, can oh, you hear close, me? Erica. Can you go back to the poster part? And you froze again. Um, maybe you want to log in and, and Mark and I are just, yes, we know she's frozen. She's in Canada. She's frozen up there. Um, so if you can log in again, Erica, that would be great. In the meantime, why don't Mark and I Let's just see what we had planned because we know enough to be dangerous, but um, that's what um, was scary for Erica because we can make up all the things we want in the meantime. Hold on a second. Did you do that, Mark, or is that me? I all think right. that's you. I didn't touch a thing, but I'm going for it. Um, so I think we already start, talked about the registration and the trapping. And in some cases, like in the poster, it didn't really bother me. Um, but as a, if, if perfection is required, I think that's and that's where you would recommend the lamination then, right? So that you start with a clean slate. Well, th we actually put this slide up to actually show the flaw, which I don't really think took too much away from the design. But as you can see from the... Uh, along the slanted line. I will insist we did this on purpose, Mark, but you said, you call it flaw. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> from a, from a printer's perspective, we're obviously trying to get it perfect, and right. when we try to fit this, in a sense, these are either three or four runs, and paper has some stretch, and these are digital technologies, and so it's not it's not a perfect process. So this that's what made this piece so challenging is when you're trying to do a perfect fit especially on an angle, it's extremely challenging in multiple runs. Um, Sabine, but can you hear again, me? Again, when you look at the notebook and it's in someone's hand, the smile they get reflects the true success of the project right. rather than those printers just being the flaws that we, we are always trying to eliminate. Right. Perfect. Um, we basically finished up, Erica, without you, but welcome back. Wonderful. <laughs> So we just talked about restoration and trapping and what Mark calls a flaw, and I think we did this on purpose. So if you want to take it from here, then we'll Yeah. Be no, great. The worst worst case scenario, what you don't want to happen on a webinar. <laughs> That's okay. Great. So yeah, I, I really well, Stefan, Stefan let me know it's hundred degrees in Canada, so it can't be that 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 it's cold up there and that's why you're No, today we're yeah. reaching well, I talk in Celsius, so I won't confuse the matter anymore. But it's warm today. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, what we're, um, the examples that we've seen here, and again, the real um, element of, of wanting to touch base on these printer insights is really that connection, as always, as a designer and working with your printer, um, because certainly with this technology, um, 
there's options and, and you want to get the best results. The one last um, question that comes up often and we do want to touch on is stocks, especially if you're um, a wedding invitation designer or any type of designer with invitations and stationery, what's possible? Um, the really um, core thing in understanding that this is an image transfer. So unlike a hot foil stamp where it's pressing into the paper, um, it's sitting on top. So the example on the left, um, a coated stock really does um, set the, ink, the digital ink or toner up well. And it, it, it is the um, most commonly used type of paper stock with this technology. You just get a beautiful, smooth result with it. Having said that, and again, connecting with your printer before you promise anything to a client, um, uncoated stocks and textured stocks do, um, do create some really beautiful results as well. So if you're willing to work with what that does, the feather that you're seeing on the right hand was on a linen stock. So again, because of the type of this technology and it's sitting up on top of it, um, the linen act texture actually showed through the feather. Uh, so you're getting, um, again, a different look, but if that works in with your design and, and what you're offering, um, it can create an opportunity for some really beautiful pieces as well. So again, there is opportunity with different print stocks, but connect with your printer um, and talk that through just to make sure that in the end, there's no surprises with what you're offering. Did you wanna add anything on the stocks, Mark? Uh, certainly jump in there if, if you have any further insights with the paper. Yeah, again, printers have a different outlook on stocks than designers do. Um, we, we run a lot of wedding invitations here. And in, in the sleeping technology online, we only offer matte coated papers because it, it, it yields a, I'm not gonna say a perfect result, but a very good result. Now we've done wedding invitations, including we run a lot of Savoy, which is 100% cotton. Um, but I wouldn't wanna ship that to you, as, depending on the designer's expertise and understanding because in a sense, it looks like it's picking because the foil won't be solid on that paper. So that's an extreme example of an uncoated paper. The smoother the stock is, the more the foil will adhere. Um, and there are some people that actually want that look, but it can be a challenging um, to understand exactly what you're going to get. And that that's, um, so again, if you're working with a local printer and they're doing it, they might be able to run some samples to show you what you're actually going to get, and then you can decide if it works. So we've certainly done some beautiful wedding invitations on uncoated stocks with sleeping, um, but not we don't sell that online because of the challenging nature of that. Yeah, and just knowing and and knowing what it would look like. Obviously, if you were thinking in terms of hot foil stamping, you wouldn't expect the linen showing through as in the sample here. So I would say Diala here. I love the show through because mm -hmm. I think it adds an extra element. As, as you know, when you do hot foil stamping, it basically stamps out any pattern of the paper and it gets smooth, which is fine. And don't get me wrong, I love hot foil stamping and the depth you get, but there's something to be said for playing with the paper texture here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. So those are um, just walking through a few of, just to help understand a little bit from the print end and production and what you're gonna be getting um, on all of this. but. Bottom line, um, digital foil sleeking, it certainly opens new opportunities. Um, and this is a technology that offers um, foil on projects that we previously as designers may not have incorporated into, um, whether it be variable data, um, again, short run um, quantities, uh, time frames, and different factors. So it really, um, really is a great um, technology to start to learn and incorporating um, the metallic and foils are also beautiful ways to accent design pieces. We all know that. Um, and this opportunity now to use it in, in more pieces than before um, is great. So certainly worth learning, um, find a, finding a printer that you can work with closely on this, incorporating it into your design projects. So I trust that gives you an overview and um, from my end, and I will right. hand it back so to Sabine. <laughs> Thank you. So just as a quick reminder, if you're live on the call, you're getting one of these little sample books so you can see sleeking life up close and personal. Uh, but we get, we have a slew of questions, so brace yourself. Um, and I think one of the questions that, that come, came up several times, and I want to make very clear, um, D, I don't know if D is your full name or, or D, full stop, um, wants to know, what do you need a laser printer? And I think that's what we need to make very clear that these are digital production presses. 
They are um, like HP, um, any of those with the digital inks. Um, and as well, it does work on most um, toner based Xerox or in like those digital type um, prints as well. And Mark can speak more to that with what he has in house um, as well. We run HP into the technology, but yeah. we certainly wouldn't be opposed to running other other technologies also. But that's the only thing we're just thinking on is HP into that. Um, what are you <laughs> what are you using to apply the floral? It's an well, offline process. Let me yeah, come on, Mark. Yeah, it, it it is a it, you know, Erica touched on this. It is a lamination process. So we're actually using a laminator to adhere the foil. So it's it's so we prefer to use the four step process where we print the design, then we put on a, a a printable laminate on top of it, then we print the foil piece, and then we put the foil piece. So the the foil goes on the same machine as the laminator, as the laminate printable lamb does. So that registration allows it to fit and, and the sizing. So can I translate this for designers? Do you mind? Not at all. So basically what he's what he's trying to say is you use a digital production press like an HP or a Xerox, you name it, you print your black down where you want your foil to be, and then it's an offline process, you go to a device that is actually called a sleeker, don't blame me, I didn't name it, um, so it's a sleeking device that then runs through and it adds the laminate or the foil in this case, and then you can go back to your digital press and print on top of it if you like. Yeah. Um, and I think you have a Nobelo sleeker, don't you, Mark? So we do. And I believe Jeff, Jeff's probably on the call. And I believe in 2014, I asked him, why did you name it such an ugly name? Because it, okay, it, we're not going into this. <laughs> we're not going into this here. Um, we have so many questions, guys. So Jessica wants to know, is there minimum size tolerance for the sleeking? Um, so traditional foil stamping is sometimes five point with rules, with lines, for example. So is there a minimum where you say it cannot hold more than this or? Well, the, the poster that you saw of the night sky, those stars are, are extremely tiny. However, I wouldn't want to do that in type. So um, I believe that one sample I have has type in it. And it, it obviously depends whether it's a serif or a sans serif font. So a sans serif font, you could go a little bit smaller. But with, with, with a serif, it's, it's, it, they're going to disappear or pick from the sheet. So I definitely five point, I, I would not feel comfortable, but that would depend on the design. Um, but that would scare me. I'm just going to show you here too. Like, I guess this is, say, wait this a second, a sample. here we go. Like this is, on, I've, I've seen it, even the feather sample. Can I just back up here for a moment? Um, yeah, this is extremely detailed, this feather, just to give you an idea. Um, so there may have been some areas in which it filled in a little more than expected, but it's only adhering to the digital, wherever there's a, a digital print there. Mm -hmm. So as long as, um, the settings and the printer is able to accomplish that, uh, Mike might, or Mark might have more to add to this. Um, it is going to adhere to those details. So again, there might be a slight picking somewhere, um, in some area, um, but it will, will adhere. And, and these are the details. It's hard to see because this is not signed, but this is quite small type. I don't have it in front of me. Um, this is only an eight and a half by 11 sheet. So, I mean, we are getting pretty small and it's legible down here. Yeah. And so um, when you think about the, um, the leaf picture, if Erica's name was on the top of that picture and it was in a very scripty font, I would say she probably wouldn't be pleased with that part. She would love the leaf portion. And then the, the name wouldn't be perfect and, and because those are two types of different designs. If that makes sense. He's a printer. That's why he says scripty fonts. <laughs> uh, forgiving people. Um, and Mark and I go way back so I can see this. So Brenda wants to know, am I understanding this correctly? You're basically going backwards. In basic terms, the foil first, then you print on top of it rather than traditional print first, then foil. In our guest books, which I'll show another example here, this is a four step process. So we print the design, the color design, then we print, then we use the foil laminate, the, I'm sorry, the printable laminate, then we print the foil design, then we foil. So it can be done that way or it can be done the, the foil design first 
and then then it needs to be tracked. So I so, think what Brenda is referring to is the overprint that Erica has. Yeah, and, and really, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. I, I don't know that there's a one answer to that that it's backwards or forwards. It really, it, it's the what you're trying to achieve. So in this example. Um, we did um, a print and then we foiled it and then we overprinted with the color. So in this case, um, it was foil first. So again, it depends on on what, if you want that foil to have overprint um, or if you want the foil to be its, um, you know, clean original. metallic foil, original color, yeah. Yeah. Um. Ha. Bob wants to know, so this is all foil transfer and not poly and okay in the recycling stream. Pardon? Yeah, it's a little bit, hang on. Bob, let me let me get this straight in my head and I come back to you. Let me go with an easier one first. I have to think this through. Um, Sue wants to know, on an overprint, how does it know? <laughs> That's a good one, Sue. No, I really, I love this one because I think nobody asked this before. I think this is a great question. So Sue wants to know, on an overprint, how does it know not to print on the foil? So I think a sample is the perfect example here. And, and this would be one of those scripty fonts. So you see that's only in the silver. And what's happening is the entire back of the piece is has a printable lamb on top of it. And then we're putting the four color black, which is just their names on top of that. And then it, that's probably a question more for Nobelis. It knows that the foil only goes where the ink is on the second layer. It, it yeah, bonds, it bonds to digital ink. But in, can I talk to the, uh, another process of that as well? For example, in um, this poster example, um, how does it know? So in, in, in this three-step one you're seeing on the left, it's an actual knockout. So there's a knockout of the areas in which the foil was applied. So it's actually being printed around it. So there's, again, two scenarios. If um, It's beautiful when you can use a printable laminate because you don't have to worry about knockouts and you can print that foil right up on top of it. Um, or you can bond that foil to the digital ink sitting on the printable laminate. Um, but when you're only using the three-step process, you do actually have to knock out those areas if they're coming in contact with another image area. Let me just do it really, really for the technology challenge, if I may. Mm -hmm. So on the left-hand side, you see the three-step process. So this is basically um, the chair is where the toner goes first, then it goes through the sleek and it puts the foil on it. And so theoretically, you can leave it as this and this and then say, I have a golden chair. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and you can print around the chair, which in that case, you would knock it out. Or you can print on top of the chair, as this example show. Yeah. Um, that helps a little bit there. Um, Diana wants to know, I'm sorry if I missed this, but um, which digital presses is this technique su suitable for? We use HP Indigo. Right, but it, it basically works with all the toner presses, does it not? That's more a question for confirm with Novellus. Yeah, I do know that it does work with toner technology as well. Um, as yeah. to what range of those pieces of equipment, um, again, like Mark said, to confirm with them. Right. And, and there's um, another option. It, it, we don't actually do offset printing here, but if someone was doing a, a 10,000 piece mailer, that was, you could actually offset print the first run put the lamb down and then do, for example, if you wanted personalized names across the mailer, you could do those in foil on top. There's no reason an offset sheet wouldn't work. Right. Got it, but the, you need the lamb in between. You need um, it. Well, Brian wants to know, and this is a great question. So this is visual, not tactile. Correct. Yeah. That was the quickest question you ever got here, Brian. <laughs> no, um, no indenting. <laughs> Pardon? There's no indenting like traditional foil stamping. No. Or because in digital, there's no pressure, so it's really yeah. flat. Um, Craig wants to know what kind of foils are available, like um, flat met met um, foils. I'm, I'm, you know, what is and what is the max image area? So I think Erica, you had some of the foils up there already. 
Um, so the booklet that is being um, given, um, this one here, has the standard foils that are available. So, um, I mean, there's silver, there's rose gold, copper, um, there's a royal blue, a red, a green. Um, there's holographics, so, um, three or four different beautiful holographic. One's a rainbow holographic. Um, this one is like a, a speckled, whoop. You can see that a little bit. Um, so those are in the standard ones as, as far as foils go. Um, again, talk with your printer. Um, they may not all stock all of the standard ones. The way, one of the best ways of achieving the color as well as this option of overprinting with um, CMYK on top of it, if that gives a quick answer. <laughs> and from a printer's perspective, we, we depending on the colors, we stock either like 11 or 12 inch rolls and 18 inch rolls. So. We, we run the HP Indigo 12,000, which has a sheet size of 20 by 29. So, but the foil is slightly smaller than that. So technically we can do an 18 by 24 inch uh, sign with foil on it. If someone flooded a gold foil across that, that's not something we've done. We could try it. It'd be, it'd be interesting, shall we say. We're learning the word, the meaning of the word interesting. We're in Russia, <laughs> we're very um, Stuart wants to know, so you, and, and I think this is a general question that is coming back and back again. Do you have to laminate before you overprint? Yes. No. No. <laughs> yes. Sorry, let, let the designers answer this for you. It's depending on the outcome. It depends on what you want to do with it. So in an example, um, like these books might, for example, there's no caress laminate, there's no laminate here. It's simply, um, a, a print and then the foil was applied um for example um even in this one here it was just a print or it was a print a foil and then an overprint um so but for examples um like the book that mark the photo book mark has that the process there is that they did a, a print and then they put down a laminate in which sealed all of that so really what you're doing is you're starting with a fresh canvas with this this image underneath and then you're printing it again and now the digital foil is the sleeking foils bonding specifically to what has been printed on the printable laminate <laughs> yeah and I, I think the key really is um the registration here because mm -hmm. as mark pointed out the registration is not 150 percent accurate and we, it, which is perfectly fine and i think charming in the moon image um but if you want it to be spot on then the ideal case scenario would be you print whatever you want to print Put a laminate, or what Mark called lamb. It's a piece of print that he doesn't have. Um, put a laminate on top, which basically seals, as Erica mentioned, which seals the print in, and then you can run again. It through, you can run it again through the indigo or whatever to, other toner press you have. Put on the blank blank toner, black toner where you want the fall to be, and so that is then where you really have no issues with registration. That's why the the starry sky um, on the right hand side is just super perfect. perfect. Yeah. And that's why I think, Mark, you mentioned that you prefer, whenever possible, using the, the laminate in the process. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, ooh, this is a good one. Craig wants to know can you use gradations, like image drop shadow, for instance? Have you discussed that much? There's no reason why you couldn't. The outcome would, uh, I'm trying to think of another word other than interesting. Um, the outcome would be a little bit unpredictable. It, it's, it's actually quite a compelling question. I don't know that we've done that, um, but it, theoretically, if there's a dot there, the foil will adhere. So in theory, it should work. There you go. The definite maybe. I have not designed specifically with gradations in this technology, so I'll defer to, as Mark explained. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have several questions about coated and uncoated papers, and I'm just picking Ariana's here. Um, could you address the difficulties of uncoated papers and sleeking, or any advice for using uncoated papers? Well, one of the, 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 the magics of uncoated is the touch and feel. So literally, you cannot use well, you, if you use the overprint method with an uncoated paper, you're sealing the sheet, so you're losing that tactile feel. So in uncoated papers, we would never do that. We'd always use the three-step technique. 
And the way the foil lays down um, with traditional foil is the heat and pressure, which really, not to say you can't have trouble there, but it, it, it's mostly a really solid process. The, you tend to get more what we call picking in the industry, where if you did that moon in on an uncoated paper, the moon would not be solid gold. Uh, kind of like what you saw on the feather, you're gonna get show through. And a lot of it gets into the, the skill and the expectations of the designer, if they understand what that means and what it's gonna look like. So you're gonna get, a, in printing, we might call it a modeled effect of the foil on the uncoated paper. And the smoother the paper, the less it will be. If you printed that moon on 100% cotton stock, it would be a very, very uneven foil lay down, which could be could be a great effect. Exactly what we might want. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I, um, have, I do, if I can just add to that too, um, I do know of some scenarios where um, instead of hitting it with say one hit of black, they've gone in and hit it three or four times. Again, you're working with the digital um, press. So sometimes registration, you start putting a sheet through that many times under heat and pressure and you can create a whole nother skew of issues for yourself. Um, but sometimes um, doing multiple hits of black or, or a good solid CMYK rich black build um, can still, I remember we need, we need that digital print there for a good bond. And so that's really why, right? Because in an uncoated stock, it's, it's seeping into the paper where on a coated stock, it's sitting on top. So that's if, we can understand why a coated uncoated is a bit more challenging, but ask your printer, see how far they'll push it to, or, you know, and, 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 and work with it from that perspective. So I, I don't think we're going to get to all questions because we have a slew here. Um, but um, if we don't get, and we're already at the top of the hour and I'm trying to be mindful of your, of everybody's time, uh, but I want to pick one or two more and then um, I see if we can answer the remaining questions offline. I'm going to twist Erica's and, and Mark's arm. Um, Sue had a great question. So since it is used for short runs and variable data, would you say it is affordable? Yes, yes. You're avoiding the cost of the die, which is obviously a fixed cost. So so it it is affordable. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Joe asked, and I think that this came several times, so I'm just picking Joe's question up. Um, so this seems very similar to cold foil. You want me to answer that or you want to go? Go ahead and answer I can that. Answer it. Pardon? Yeah, please answer that. Okay. Um, yes and no, because cold foil is offset. So cold foil is for larger print runs. It's run as a fifth or sixth station, fifth and sixth station, or first or second station, depending on how you look at it, in an offset environment. That means you have to have a minimum print run, while this is all digital. Um, so you can basically say, I want 10 of something, one of something, like the art prints we saw. It allows you to really have super short print runs um, and you couldn't do variable data with cold foiling because it's, again, it's an offset environment. So um, it prints, it, it's, it's perfect for longer print runs. Definitely. That is where I probably, if it's the same image and I want it 10,000 times, I probably wouldn't use um, sleeking. I would go for cold foiling, but especially for short runs, variable data, um, this is where sleeking really shines. So I hope that answered your question, Joe. Um, let me see where we're already a few minutes. In. We have so many questions. I, got, I love you guys. I love it when you have all these questions. Um, gosh, I don't know even where to cook. Um, ooh, I like it. So Dennis uses the last question, but the rest of you answer offline, I promise. Um, how badly does soft touch laminate on top of the foil take away from the foil appearance? on top of the foil so when you're getting the yeah. mat, when you're getting yeah. the matted effect so i don't i have one insight to that i don't know if mark's had any print jobs too so um yeah that's foil on top hang on let me make you larger here so this there you go the mat lamb we we had actually completed the piece and we were actually discussing this before this webinar and so we threw a mat lamb on top of it so you actually, it doesn't eliminate the foil effect. It does dull it down somewhat. So it gives you, yeah, a mat. The one, the one scenario I would be cautious of it in is um, a darker, uh, too much CMYK overprint in a solid area is going to start to take away from the foil. So the darker col the color you have, 
um, the less foil would be coming through. And, and Sabine has that on her notebooks. I think that's what she's grabbing for. Yeah, we learned that lesson here. So if you can keep in mind, to the foil is about a 30% gray. So um, really, if you hit it uh, with you know a, a less amount of CMYK and can achieve the color you're looking for, um, you're going to get more of that foil coming foil shine coming through. So that furthers if you were adding a laminate on top of it and you already had a dark CMYK print on top of it, you may be dulling down that foil considerably to wondering whether it's it's actually benefiting what you're trying to achieve. So. I think in, in, in general, the beauty about this is don't do what we do. Leave it till the last minute with these notebooks. Um, I think they were great. I mean, if you look at this, uh, you can see this there's a gradation in it actually in the coloring. Um, but it, as I mentioned before, I would probably, there's some areas where, where we went 100% with the color and then we went less and more, as you can see. Um, so allow yourself that extra day or two for testing it, mm -hmm. um, especially when you do it the first time around. And no two... As we know, this is print. No two projects are exactly alike. Um, so give yourself the extra time. I love having all your questions here. And I, would, I can sit here for another two hours and answer all your questions. But I hope um, Erica and Mark will be gracious enough to, offer, uh, to answer them offline. Um, I hope we gave you some ideas of the possibilities that are there for you. Um, this all started with my being cornered in an elevator at 1030 at night and uh, digital foiling, really, you can do this? Yes, you can. Um, I wanna thank uh, Nobelos again for making this webinar possible and allowing us basically to, to think and bring foil and shimmer and shine into the short run project and smaller budgets. And I know we all, uh, this is the main con con concern I hear from all designers, you know, we have shorter print runs, we have tighter budgets. Um, so there are options available to you and this is why um, I was very keen on bringing this to you and, and showing you what is possible for you today. Um, I know one of the questions was also, is there a list of printers who have the sleeking device? And I will get back to Nobelos. And once we post this on our site, I will make sure um, and see if we can get a list um, so that you find a printer in your neighborhood. But you can always talk to Mark, Mark Sarkwa. Um, and we send a link to him um, as well in um, on our webpage. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to Nobelos and have a fabulous rest of your day. Take care.